All right, guys, let's look at some players who could be available on your waiver wire who could make a, a difference in your league. The first one we've got to talk about, of course, is, is Kenneth Fareed. Now of the Houston Rockets, Fareed has been great. He's been starting at center for the Rockets with the absence of Clint Capella, and I'm sure his roster percentage has been right. Well, I'm sure I know it. His roster percentage has been rising steadily over the past uh, past couple of times, uh, past couple of weeks. He is he's still not a top 100 player, averaging 29 minutes over his three games with Houston, but 15 and nine with 1.7 blocks on 62% shooting. The reason he's not a top 100 player is because he's shooting 47% from the free throw line. Now, those 1.7 blocks are by far a career level of, uh, of shot blocking. That's 2.1 blocks per 36 minutes. In the past, he's been a one block, 1.1 block, 1.3 block, one block per 36. So it's significantly elevated, but to be fair to Farid, all of this season, it has been a minimal sample size, but his block rate has been elevated this year. But what you're looking at him for is field goal percentages for points, it's for rebounds. The minutes are there, the production's there. He shouldn't be sitting really on any waiver wire. He's available on in 47% of Yahoo leagues, and he needs to be grabbed. Another new starting center is Punch Bob Shiploke, Bobby Portis of the Chicago Bulls. He started, he went to the bench for Robin Lopez. He's back starting. I don't think that Bobby Portis is a good player. You've heard me talk about this many times. That doesn't really matter. It does at certain points in fantasy, especially when you're looking long-term in Dynasty. But for now, Portis is a must-roster guy. Now, over the last two weeks, he's playing 26 minutes a night, and he's the 188th ranked player. So he's not good. We know that. 12.5 and 8.7 rebounds. He's shooting 40% on 25% usage. Uh, he gets no defensive numbers, but he's going to bludgeon his way, especially into, in points leagues, into having top 100 value for this uh, time now, unless the Bulls make some sort of move and get another center, which is highly unlikely. Portis is going to be getting decent minutes most nights, and he should be scooped up off the waiver wire, available in 49% of Yahoo leagues, so he's still around for plenty of you guys, and he should be rostered. Another guy who is really short-term, and that is Jolly Okafor of the New Orleans Pelicans. He is putting up some absolute monster numbers with Anthony Davis out. But it's not just Anthony Davis that's out, because Nick Miritich is out, and Julius Randle has been out the last couple of games. Not to take away from the accomplishments of Okafor, because his last four games that he started, 20 and 10 with two blocks, 17 and 10 with six blocks, 18 and 8 with nothing, and then 24 and 15 with three blocks. They are absolutely ludicrously good numbers. Now, when Anthony Davis comes back, um, yeah, it's it's going to put a cramp on what Okafor can do. Add Miritich, add Randall back in. That's all you know, real possibility to Im impact what he does. Uh, Davis is likely back at some point this week. Uh, I'd say Randall's going to be back this week. Miritich is out a little bit longer. That's going to have a pretty big impact on what Okafor is doing. But even if you get one, two games of top 30 type numbers, which is exactly what he's doing at the moment, if you can get one or two games out of him at that level, then it's worth it. He's available in 55% of leagues. Now, some people are going a little bit overboard, so you might be able to turn this waiver wire ad into a sell high. I've had multiple people ask me, oh, Jaleel's good. He's still going to have 12-team value when Davis and, and Miritich and Randall come back. And that's literally just not going to be possible. There just aren't enough minutes for him to be able to do that. He's a guy that's getting here 30 minutes a night at the moment, and he's putting up fantastic numbers. But you've got to get 36 minutes to Davis, 30-plus minutes to Randall. 28 plus minutes to Miritich, that leaves you 12 minutes for Okafor, 15 minutes, depending on how they throw things out, whether they want to go Miritich at small four, which is a terrible idea, whether they want to completely abandon playing any Darius Miller at power forward, which I think that's probably a likely scenario. Okafor's done enough, I think, to remain as a regular enough sort of player in the rotation. But early in the season, they were playing just a three-big rotation with, with Randall, Miritich, and Davis. So I don't think that this is any indication that you're going to have um, him come in and still play 26 minutes a night. It just doesn't seem possible to me. Um, so the short-term value is not there. So maybe adding him and then flipping him for someone who believes that might be a, might be a really interesting way to get some great value. Tyler Johnson of the Miami Heat. Haven't been big on Johnson this season because his uh, opportunities have been limited, but something that I've called for Spolster to do for a while is to get Roddy Magruder out of the rotation, and it's happened, and Johnson is now in the starting lineup. In the last two games, he's played 36 and 31 minutes, 15 points and 9 points, 5 assists and 6 assists. So that, that's enough value there in itself. Now, he's going to struggle at times to be a consistent player, but a guy who is available in 75% of Yahoo leagues and can help 12-teamers, he, he does have that value. He's not a huge value guy. He's not a he's not a massive must roster. Got to grab him at all costs type of player. But I believe 
that him starting in this role will stick for a little bit of time. There is a chance they could put Derek Jones Jr. in there, which I'd really like to see. I'm not sure Johnson's that good. But he, he blocks a decent amount of shots for a, for a guard as well. That's worth noting. And the assists have been solid. The scoring's been nice. He's hitting some threes. He, he's got value in this larger role. And one of my question marks on him was, where was he going to get this role? Well, here it is now, because they've have, they have excised both Kelly Olenek and Rodney Magruder from the rotation. Noah Vonley is your Knicks starting center at the moment. Um, he's been inconsistent this season, and he's put, look, he's probably been the Knicks' best fantasy guy all year, but he's had moments where he's been top 70, moments where he's been outside the top 200 because minutes have been fluctuating, and I'm sure you all know the reason for that. But over the last couple of games, starting at center, he's been strong, especially last game where he had 22 and 13 with two blocks. His block rate this season is at a career high. His free throw rate, uh, free throw percentage is uh, the best number it's been in three seasons. His three-point shooting is at uh, basically a career high as well. So he's doing things at significantly elevated levels. Some of his numbers, which were really up at the start of the year, especially the field goal percentage and the free throws, have started to come back to earth a little bit. But Vonley is that player. Think of maybe like a Derek Favors type with three or four extra minutes, and that makes him a back-end 12-team league guy. And he is still available in uh, in quite a few leagues, 50% of Yahoo leagues to be exact. His teammate, Mitchell Robinson, I really, really like the upside in Robinson. I think they should be starting him as they did earlier in the season. But no, we've got to make sure we get the old Swiss Army knife, Lance Lance Thomas out there, and by Swiss Army Knife, you mean he can do one thing moderately well, then that's exactly what he is. Robinson is an elite shot blocker at this point. Now, he can't stay out of foul trouble, and even when he can stay out of foul trouble, Fizdal only gives him 16 minutes, but he is averaging a shit ton of blocks. He's last, he's, since he came back from injury, two blocks, four blocks, five blocks, five blocks. He has missed just two shots from the field in that time. He's uh, He was 14 of 16 over that time, so a huge, huge boost in field goal percentage and blocks, literally providing nothing else but field goals and blocks. And if those minutes decide to be boosted to 21 or 22, this guy could average three blocks a game for the rest of the season, and that is obviously a valuable scenario. Kevin Herter, my man, is still available in way too many leagues. Uh, the 127th ranked player over the last two weeks, his last performance on Saturday wasn't great. We saw him get benched for Torian Prince. Not benched because he started the game, but pulled out of the game pretty uh, pretty early. It wasn't a good performance, just three points in 21 minutes. But I believe he's going to be a 30-minute-a-night guy moving forward. He can handle the ball and get assists. He can hit threes. Uh, this, the, the percentages from three have been solid all season, 38% from deep, and he is available in 68% of Yahoo leagues, and I believe, and I've believed this for a while, that he is a 12-team league player. Each one more, a guy to look at, and that's more just for the short-term scenario with all these guys out. I, I don't believe in more as a long-term prospect, but for the short-term, you can get some value over these next week or so. Get some extra value out of each one more, and I think that he could be uh, useful in that scenario. And the Bulls' new starting small forward is Wayne Selden. Chandler Hutchison's out for a couple of weeks with a toe injury, broken toe. Selden has shown flashes in the past. He's shown flashes of being somewhat of a ball handler, of scoring and doing it efficiently. Now, he is far from a must-roster guy, Selden. But if he can get 30 minutes a night here, now a lot of people trying to hype up Jabari Parker. They have just not played Jabari Parker at small forward really at all. Boylan hasn't done it at all. Um, we've seen Shaq Harrison and Ryan Archer Jackano play that position. We just look, maybe they do go with uh, with um, uh, Parker a little bit there. I'm recording this before Sunday's game. But I wouldn't be putting great faith in that. And Selden, not a must-add guy, but maybe just a you know, say a 14 to 16 team league ad. You take a flyer on it as a new starting small forward who has shown flashes at times in Memphis of being a, a top 100 guy for short periods of time. Spencer Dinwiddie's out in Brooklyn, so that means Shabazz Napier is the guy to grab there. He's not going to have Dinwiddie-type numbers because he's not going to play Dinwiddie-type minutes. But we saw decent scoring in that first game without Spencer. Really, really good numbers there. 18 points in 28 minutes. They're the two things I care about. I'm not all that thrilled with 3 of 13 from the field. He's not going to be the same assist guy that what Dinwiddie was. But Napier is going to be able to come in here and be a, a solid enough value play and available in 91% of leagues, meaning all 14s and 16s want to grab him. And 12 teams, you absolutely should be considering Shabazz Napier. Justin Holiday with Kyle Anderson and Garrett Temple out. He's going to bludgeon his way into decent enough minutes. He's going to get steals. He's going to hit threes. It's not going to be long-term because he's just not that good. 
But for now, with all these injuries in Memphis, he is going to have a pretty significant opportunity, and he should be uh, re-added if he was dropped, which yeah, he rightfully should have been dropped. A guy we need to look at is Chetty Osman, also his teammate Ante Zizic, who's putting up really strong numbers, and he's a good short-term ad, very much in the mold of Jaleel Okafor. But Chetty Osman, the minutes haven't gone away all season from Chetty, but over the last week, he's starting to put it together. He's starting to look better. He's starting to be more aggressive. The shots are starting to go in, and over the last two weeks, he is actually a top 100 player. Now, that is in large part fueled by the fact that he's shooting 53% from the field, which, uh, given how he's shot this season, is likely to come down. But if you're looking for a guy whose role is uh, is secure, it's relatively solid, who has shown these flashes at times before, European play, summer league play, sometimes this season he's had these moments, he's worth taking a look at. His last two games, he scored a career high against the Celtics, 25 points, and then two days later, bested that career high by scoring 29 against the Miami Heat. He added six assists combined, 12 rebounds combined, nine triples, two steals, and shot the ball extremely well. He's been at 55% or over in three of the last four games, and he is available in 63% of Yahoo League. So Chetty Osman is absolutely an option if you want to take that flyer. If it's a Zubats, for the Lakers, who is now their starting center. We don't know if that's long-term. He started last game, McGee played more minutes, and Tyson Chandler was out of the rotation. But over the last two weeks, in just 18 minutes a night, Zubats is the 100th ranked player. He is shooting 71% from the field, which is likely to come down, averaging 14 and 6 and only 0.7 blocks. But he is worth a grab. Um, is he worth a grab over JaVale McGee? That's really debatable. I probably would, to be honest, because I just feel there's a little bit more faith coming with Zubats. But yeah, even LeBron returning could have an impact on on how that rotation looks. So it's not a situation where you just grab him at all costs, but he absolutely has to be considered as a pretty strong, uh, pretty strong ad option across most leagues. And the last one, it's probably more tailored to deeper leagues. And I've hung a lot of shit on this guy's ability to do absolutely nothing with a lot of minutes. And that's Terence Ferguson of the Oklahoma City Thunder. And he, I think for the first time ever, has cracked the top 120 over the last two weeks. He's playing 30 minutes a night, but what he's doing, he's taking his usage from like you know, 4% up to you know, double digits, which is great for him. Now, he's on the season at 10.7% usage. Over the last two weeks, 14%, and that is a big, big difference because he's also hitting his threes at 40%, which he's done pretty much all of the season. 2.7 triples per game, 12 points per game, and 1.3 steals on 49% shooting. That's valuable. Now, I'm not sure I trust that 49% shooting, especially the fact that he's going 73% from two-point range. I buy the 40% from three. I buy the two threes per game. I buy the 30 minutes. He's pl outplaying Dennis Schroeder at the moment. The 1.3 steals, they can be real as well. Schroeder is available in 95% of Yahoo leagues, meaning nearly everybody who is listening is going to have the opportunity to grab him now. He's probably more of a, yeah, grab him in 20s, 18s, 16s, probably grab him in 14s. I'd definitely be considering to do that in 14 team leagues. And in 12 team leagues, he's worth a short-term flyer just to see how it all pans out. But the signs for, for Terrence Ferguson at the moment are absolutely trending in the positive direction, and that's nothing but a good thing. So there's some waiver wire options for you guys. Good luck in uh, seeing if they can fit onto your team and with the weeks ahead.